Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. So last time we saw how to create a custom template and how to recall it with just one hotkey. We are now ready to talk about more complex workflows like component builders, variants, purposes, and all of that USD specific jargon. It will be my pleasure to explain all of that to you. So without further ado, let's open Houdini and let's start. So here is the scene we had from last time. For now, I will just delete all of that and I will save. If you didn't see the first video, please check it because again, just by pressing one hotkey, I can create this whole setup and it's very, very clean and useful for your renders. Let's now introduce the component builder. This is probably one of the most interesting setups in Solaris. In the component geometry, we can go inside and we are in SOPS. So here we can still import everything with a file. I don't have any specific file I would like to import. Maybe we can just try with a Tommy. I will also remove the textures and the clothing. We can start connecting the Tommy to all three of them. Shift S to make this connection more beautiful. So this is the default. This is just your geometry. So it's the last output after your node graph. The proxy should be a poly reduced version of your geometry. Sometimes you can just do a poly reduce. Say that you want to keep only 10% of the original percentage and just put it here. Now, if you visualize, I guess that's fine for now, as this will be the stuff that will be shown in the viewport, while this one will be the one that will be shown as render time. This concept of showing a low poly asset in the viewport and a high poly asset when you render, it's called purpose. This will have a purpose called proxy. The other one will have a purpose called render. The same proxy is optional, as it says, and it works with physics tools. There are some tools as the edit lob, also at the stage manager, that allows you to just squeeze a bunch of these assets together, but they will not intersect. They will have collisions and they will be creating very natural results. Okay, so for now we don't need to worry about that. Let's actually keep everything like it is. Now we can go out that we are seeing the very low poly version. If you want to change the purpose in the viewport, you can go here in this glasses icon and instead of seeing the preview, just check final render. Now this is extremely useful. I hope you can imagine that something like that with like lots of trees or like scattered assets is extremely useful. So now that we have the component geometry out of the way, let's talk about the material library, Karma Material Builder. I will just call it red as this will be just my red. Now the material is already assigned. This is thanks to the component material. Lastly, we have our assets that has a purpose and has a material assigned. And we can go into the component output to export it. So let's visualize it. So before exporting, we can notice that we have an expression here and this is taking the name from the component output. So let's make sure this is the name you want to use for saving your asset. So in this case, it's like red, Tommy. Now I don't need to change anything here or here. I can just need to define a location. Usually this location is fine. So even this one, I will probably leave it as it is. Now a nice option that we have down here is to create a thumbnail. And this is basically useful when you have like a database, like lots of different assets, and you can choose which one you would like to use in your scene. We'll do that as the next step. For now, let's focus on exporting this one. And I will also show you how to read it in again. So I will go into save to disk. That should be already done. Now I can middle mouse click here and select my path. And if I want to import it, I just need to use a reference node. Now I can visualize my reference and of course it's empty, but it's looking for a file pattern. So I can just control V my Tommy. And now this is reading from the disk. That means that our component builder worked correctly. So now we have this workflow clean. Let's see how to actually create a thumbnail and how actually to add that to a library. So we can just have a huge library of assets that we can use anytime. So first of all, I will need to open the tab. So we'll go here, new pane, Solaris, and I will choose asset catalog. Now we already have some of these assets and it's just as easy as dragging and dropping them into the viewport and you will be able to see them. We have an asset reference. It's another version of the reference node. They are actually very similar and it's already importing one of the assets in the scene. But we want to add our Tommy to our library. Now this database that we have over here is technically the Houdini default database. So we cannot really change it. We need to create a new database and from there start to add our assets. So let's actually do that. I will just delete these asset references and I will go here in this gear and say create new asset database file. In this case, I will just call it Nodeflow database and save it. And as you can see, it's empty. Now, in order to save our asset, in this case, our red Tommy to the database, we need to give it a thumbnail. Otherwise, it will be very hard to understand what asset we are looking for. So there are different ways of rendering a thumbnail. So we can definitely see like view thumbnail camera. So now we are in thumbnail camera. We can spin it, we can do whatever we want. I think this is fine to get an idea. I have to imagine this one as a small icon over here so I can identify my asset. I can also render an image, but that would not be necessary. Probably this is already fine for me. So I can just 
first generate thumbnail. So once it's been generated, save to disk. Now it has been exported again with a thumbnail and I can just click on add to asset catalog. As you can see, you will find your asset over here. Now this order of operations is important. So make sure always to save your thumbnails, then save to disk and then asset catalog. What I would like to show you it's how to create variants and that's the second most important topic of this video after the purpose this is especially useful in a production where for instance you can imagine in one of the shots you have one of the assets that's completely new and then maybe this asset gets damaged or ruined and with just one click you can say hey show me the texture variation when actually it's damaged let me show you how to add some material variants to do that I will just need to make some space over here. I will also duplicate these component materials as I want to have two different materials. Is that easy? The only thing is that the material will take the name of this node. So this one can simply be called red. And this one, we can change the color to something like blue. Go outside, change also the name of the material. That's important to avoid conflicts. Go out and this one will be blue. Now we have two materials on the same assets. Of course, we are just seeing the last one, but this is now a more complex asset. We can just do the same logic and save to disk. Now, technically this asset is the old one. So let me right click, delete it. And now we can just add this asset to the asset catalog. Although it looks the same, because of course we have not changed the thumbnail, this is now some material variations. First of all, let's try to import it. So let me go into my reference. And as you can see, it's imported. If I want to see my variants, I need to create a node called explore variants. By connecting that and changing the mode to explore variants, I will be able to see the two variants. So as you can see, this is not just a classic asset. We have some variations. These are material variations, but there are ways that we can also add geometry variations. And that is where it gets very, very interesting. So as you can see, my asset is still called Red Tommy. I actually don't like it because now I have different material variations. So I will call custom Tommy. I will make sure to save this to disk. And now in my reference, I don't want to import my red Tommy. I want to import my custom Tommy. So I can go into my folder. Actually, it will be just easier to copy this path. Okay, now we are importing custom Tommy. As you can see, we have different variants. Instead of going to duplicate variants, let's go again into explore variants, and that's it. In the case we have multiple assets in the scene and you want to change the variants to just one of them, instead of using the explore variants, that's just for preview, let's say that we have just this one, for instance, so we would like to set it to the red variant. We can just easily select it, right click, you can simply choose red. Set variant node, as the name says, will set the variant for you. In this case, it's setting the material variant to red. I'm specifying the material variant because, again, you can also create the geometry variants. And that's the next step that we will do. To create some variations in geometry, I will duplicate this one. But I need to arrange that in a different way. So here we have our first geometry with the material assigned. But I would like also to have another geometry with another material assigned. So I will duplicate my component geometry here. I will just do something like that. And then I need to sort of like merge them together. And there's a node that has a very long name, component geometry variants. This is sort of like a merge when you can just merge different geometry variants and connect it here. So in this case, the name of the geometry is important. So let's actually figure out which kind of variation we want to add. So if this is a Tommy and we have the poly reduce and whatever, let's make a Tommy big hands. So let's maybe create like a, a peak. I would like to connect all the inputs here, of course. And I don't want to do the peak on, over, on all the geometry. So like I want to add some peak. Yeah, it's definitely too much, but only on the hands. Do a group, select all of that, select all of that. Yeah, this is Tommy big, big hands. <laughs> that is great. Now we can go out. We have the first geometry variation and we have to be creative and create another variation here just to simulate that. So let's create a peak again. And let's make Tommy big head. Visualize this one and select the head, press enter. And now just exaggerate a little bit with the pick. So something like that. I hope you can tell I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm having fun. But anyway, let's go, let's go out. We have two different variations. This is Tommy big hands. And the other one is Tommy big head. Beautiful. Ideally, we don't need to assign a material. I'm just doing that to show you how to create also some material variants in the same moment, also with some geometry variants. Uh, in this case, because I already have this red, of course, I just need to rename it. Maybe we can just call it like red MTL, same here, blue MTL. And this component geometry variants takes care of creating those variations in geometry. Now we have advanced Tommy. Let's try to export this. I don't need to do anything at all here. The file is fine. I can just save to disk. Now I will need a reference and I would like to import this one back again. 
middle mouse click here, just copy, reference, and paste. As you can see, nothing changed. Now we need to add an export variance. I will just copy the same as before. So it's already set for me. Let's visualize it. And we can see we have some problems. So first of all, I mean, this is correct, but we are not seeing the variation on the big hand. So let's go here. And let's say that we want to focus mainly on the variation on geometry. Now we can see the geometry variation, and each one of those has a different materials. Same logic, in case I want to set that manually, I can go here, select this, right click, and choose one of these variations. So maybe I want Tommy Big Hands, and here it is, with its own textures, with its own material, and of course, geometric differences. Now, I could even just, I don't know, start with a primitive node, as we did in the last class just to have my viewport completely empty. And now I can drag and drop my advanced Tommy. By pressing enter in the viewport and just clicking on the asset reference, I can lay out and move my Tommy. So if I want to change the, the variant here, I just need to go here, go into the variants, add the variants, say that I want to change my geometry. Okay, so geometry variant. And over here, I can choose big hands or big head. Very easy, straightforward. So that was all for today. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you learned something new. If you did, just consider subscribing. So yeah, see you next time. Bye.